giving all praise, honor, glory to Yahweh Bahashem, Yahweh Shah Bahashem, Rachakwadash, double honors to the apostles and the elders of Great Millstone. And it's a serious shalom woman to the doctrine that's out there pushing the sincerity and the truth and the sound doctrine. This is going to be um, an extremely quick video. Um, you can see by the title, um, uh, God's Judgment, Lord Yahweh Bahashem, Yahweh Shah's Judgment, you know, doesn't have age limits and is not limited on gender either, okay? Now, um, what brought on this video is uh, yesterday, um, and you know, for for you know how we how you see certain news articles, and then they'll they'll point out the age of somebody, whether they're like really young and they passed away, or whether they're like really old and they passed away. More so young, you know what I'm saying? Because everybody expects young people just to be, you know, uh, healthy and flourish and stuff like that. Well, not in the society that's polluted. It's not going to happen like that, but. When you look back at um, when you look back at in the stories of the Bible, it was, it was the same way as well. You know, what I'm saying you had really, really young people die, man. And you know, again, they'll point out they they look they like pointing out the age on a lot of these um, news articles, but just this just to see, just to show you how young they are. And um, if anybody understood, you know, what I'm saying the Lord's judgment. <clears throat> The Lord's this is why these young men are blowing each other away like that, man. The Lord's judgment doesn't have age limits, right? Uh, abortions, you know what I'm saying? Let's go, let's go on that route. Abortions, you understand, you know, a lot of these women claim that they have power to do whatever it is they want to do, you know what I'm saying, with their bodies. And honestly, you really don't, you know what I'm saying? When you get an abortion, who do you got to go to to get that abortion? And secondly... Job chapter 9 verse 24 says what? The earth is given into the hand of the wicked. Right? So that's up to the Lord whether he wants that wants that child to die or not, man. Right? Because then you know what happens. It'll be born through another, it'll be born through another woman. And if the Lord wants it, wants that baby to be aborted, then that's just what it is, man. This is why we don't get all bent out of shape when we when we saw when we see abortions and stuff like that. Because this is this is all the Lord's judgment. Okay, now we're gonna get into some scriptures. I got, I got two. All right, we're gonna go into some scriptures. I did a video like this not too long ago, right? Uh, but this is the Book of Second Chronicles, chapter fifteen, verse thirteen. That whosoever would not seek the Lord, seek the Lord Yahweh by Hashem Yahweh the God of Israel, should be put to death, whether small or great, whether man or woman. Now you got this. Other, now you got this other thing. Because everybody likes to talk about protect the women and the children, right? But then you got this other thing that says, that'll say, we got to protect the poor and the needy. Well, the Lord is not, the Lord is not protecting the poor and the needy. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? The, the entirety of the nation of Israel is poor and needy. You know what I'm saying? And you see what he's doing to us. So, when you look at small or great, you could be homeless. Being homeless is judgment of the Lord, man. You know what I'm saying? The Lord don't got no mercy on, on the homeless. You know what I'm saying? You really, what people really have to understand is what type of power the Lord is. Well, you could make the argument and say, well, you you can't think like the Lord. But that's but that's a completely different topic. We, we've had that before. You know what I'm saying? You can't think like the Lord. Well, that's a completely different topic. I'm not saying think like the Lord. I'm saying... You have to understand what type of power the Lord is, right? And this scripture kind of sums it all up. You got the prayer of Hannah and in, 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 in Samuel, right? The Lord killeth and maketh alive. You got Deuteronomy. There's so many scriptures on this, man. You got Isaiah 45, right? How the Lord create good and evil, light and darkness. How the Lord do all these things. You got Deuteronomy. There is no God with me. Even I and, and I am in he, you know what I'm saying? I whip my glittering sword, right? I raise my hand and say, I am the Lord. There's so many scriptures on this. The Lord is, 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 is Psalm. There's, there's quite a few in Psalm, you know? Um, the Lord is terrible, you know what I'm saying? He is a great and mighty, terrible power, right? He is the Lord of Lords. He is the God of Gods. He is the Lord, the Most High, right? So he gives us an understanding of what type of power, right? Of what type of power he is, man. 
And a lot of people that pick up the Bible don't don't like reading it. And when they actually do read the Bible, they're ready to put it down. They could have just like, no, this is not how I was taught. You know what I'm saying? How could a God, how could the Most High or a God that I worship do such a terrible thing? Yeah, I understand. The, the, this is, so these so-called, by terrible things and righteousness, he's going to answer us. That's what the scriptures say, right? So how could he do such a bad thing? How could he do such a terrible thing? We understand that the Lord does not do, uh, does not make mistakes. So whatever may seem unrighteous to you, like homosexuality, guess what? The Lord created that. And he created it for his own will. Colossus, the first chapter, tells you that. He created everything for his own will. He's not going to destroy a paradise. So he created homosexuality and things like that, feminism, and the pollution of this, of this world to do what? To destroy it. Now, I'm not talking about destroying the whole world. I'm saying destroy uh, the, the epicenter of wickedness, starting with America, man. So a lot of people that pick up the Bible have no idea what they're reading, man. Right? For God so loved the world. What you think that's talking about, man? He's saying, I don't care about the rest of the world. Right? Because right after he says, I pray for them, I pray not for the world. But then before, in John 3, 16, he says, well, I, 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 um, I, for God so loved the world, he gave his only begotten son, so on and so on. What you think that scripture is talking about, man? This is why you can't just open up the Bible and read it. You know what I'm saying? Because you're not reading it when you just open it up and reading it and read it. You have to actually read it. And what I mean by reading it is going into context, man. And I actually understand what these scriptures are talking about, man. For example, you have Revelation, the book of Revelation. That I sit up there and say, the, the dragon with the seven heads and ten horns and stuff like that. Do you think that's actually talking about a dragon with seven heads and ten horns? Anybody with a lack of understanding will say, yes, that's thought about a dragon with seven heads and ten horns. You have to really do research and, 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 and go into history, okay, go into history and really look at what that's talking about, man. There's so much information out here. It's not an excuse, man. It is not an excuse. Okay? Now what we're going to do is we're going to go on. So, again, whether small or great, whether man or woman... OK, so whether you be man or whether you be woman, because this this world has 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 privileges for the for the children and the women. And the Lord is not with that, man. OK, the Lord is not. <laughs> there is no respect of persons. What do you think that's talking about, man? She's a lady. You know what I'm saying? You think the Lord you think the Lord gives a crap about that, man? Come on now. Come on now. Right. Now, this is the book of Ezekiel. All right, chapter nine, okay. Um, and I'm gonna start. I want. I was going to start at verse four, but I don't want to start at verse two, okay? Because this this kind of this kind of you know explains what's going on here for anybody that didn't read this. This is the sl a vision of slaughter, okay? Now we understand that man's goings are of the Lord. <laughs> Any anything a human being does is of the Lord, okay? Whether like like how I'm lifting up my right hand, maybe because the Lord wanted me to lift up my right hand. That's just what it is, right? So, um, Ezekiel chapter nine verse two, and behold, six men, okay, and behold, six men came from the way of the of the higher gate, which lieth toward the the north, and every man a slaughter weapon in his hand. So whether it be a bow, you know, whether it be a, a sword or, or or a spear or a pike or a halberd or whatever, or whatever they used back then, man, right? Whatever they used back then, some 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 type of some type of made up weapon from a from a broomstick, whatever, whatever slaughter weapon it was, whatever. It, as we know, you can use anything as a weapon, right? It says, um, and one man. So this is six men. Okay, now out of the five, um, let me keep let me continue on. It says, and one man among them was clothed with linen. Okay, with a writer's inkhorn on it by his side. Okay, and and then went and then went in and stood beside the brazen altar. So you had five. Five were were like men of war, pretty much. I guess you could say all of them pretty much were. But I'm talking about like you 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 know he set up five to be to be, you know what I'm saying to go in in in, in slaughter. While you had this one man with the inkhorn. Okay, and and the glory. 
of oh so um yep and the glory of god of the god of israel was gone up from the cherub whereupon he was right to the threshold of the house right and he went and he called to the man clothed with linen which had the writer's inkhorn by his side okay so he called to the to the man clothed in linen that had the inkhorn verse 4 it says and the, and the lord said unto him go through the midst of the city through the midst of jerusalem and set a mark upon the foreheads of the men that sigh and that cry for all the abominations that be done in the midst thereof okay now we got that part right he said he told the man with the inkhorn go set a mark on the foreheads on the men the reason it said the men because it is including their families the reason it said the men because the man is the head of the household so once you set a part a mark upon the man you set a mark upon that entire household not according to this society though right not according to this society but whatever mm -hmm. okay um you know the ones that sign and they're crying that's crying for all the abominations that be, that's being done in the midst thereof back then right because there's much it's, it that's like times 10 times 20 today as far as all the, those crazy abominations that they seen back then it's times 20 today okay verse 5 and to the others meaning the other five he said in mine hearing go ye after him through the through the through the city and smite let not your eye spare neither have ye pity okay so he's talking to the other five he said don't spare don't have pity you go in there and i i told you to kill that means you're going to go kill this is the Lord, this, this all loving power taught, telling these five men to go in and kill. Kill who? Slay utterly old and young. Oh my goodness. It says both maids and little children. Sheesh. Oh boy. And women. <laughs> oh man. They said this, 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 our Lord, the creative of, of everything sounds like a complete psychopath right now right oh my goodness he sound like a, it's, uh, these mass shootings who do you think is behind that man the lord is the, the one that created all these spirits and that spirit that death angel is out there man y'all heard everybody heard of the grim reaper oh yeah what you think that is that is a death angel that the lord created man right let me repeat this part man because we really got to understand the Lord's judgment does not have any limits to anybody, man. Nobody. Guess what? Guess what? Not even his only begotten son. He received judgment. He received judgment. You may ask, well, because he, he, this is why you got to go into reincarnation. Okay. Why? Why did that happen to him? You know what I'm saying? Because the Lord punishes those that go off. But. Lord Yahweh Shah, who in the world inwardly calls Jesus Christ, he never went off. He never sinned. So you would ask, well, why, why did why did the Lord put him through that type of why did the Lord allow him to go through that type of torture? Now, this is why you gotta go on a reincarnation. That'll be another video. But what I'm saying is, but the point of that's the reason I made that point for this video is because it's is equating the two situations. Or well, not two situations, but this situation. He didn't even have mercy on his only only son. What makes you think he's going to have mercy on a random child or a random woman or a random man? You know what I'm saying? Somebody random, whether it be old or young. Let me re let me repeat this part, right? This is the Lord telling these five men to go do this, man. Slay utterly old and young, okay? Both maids and little children and women. But come not near any man upon whom is the mark so he so he <laughs> people will call this sexist today right he said he put he put the man he put men over the woman and the children because naturally they are but he prioritized the men that had the mark right over the men over the women and the children <laughs> you know what i'm saying look there there is no limits when it comes to the lord's judgment 
He created you, and he can easily take you out of here, man. And people really do think they're invincible. This is why when you when you when you're driving, these people they, man, these little monster gremlins out here, man. You know what I'm saying? You driving, and they they just love walking in the street like they not gonna get hit, man. Everybody really thinks they're they, they, is there's no fear here, man. There's no order. Where there is no fear, there is no order. And a lot of people think fear is a bad thing. No, fear brings order, man. You're supposed to fear your parents, man. You're not supposed to fear them on the level of, like you fear the Lord. No. Right? But the Lord set your parents up to be over you, man. Just like a wife is supposed to fear her husband. Because uh, the husband is over the wife. Right? There, t t no fear <laughs> no fear brings this order, man. Right? It says, but come not near any man upon whom is the mark and begin at my sanctuary. Then they began at this at the ancient men, which were before the before the house. Right. And he said it to them, the father house and fill the courts with with the slain. Oh, my goodness, man. <laughs> Mind you, this is talking about men, women, children. He said, fill the courts with slain. Fill it all. Fill it all with slain. Right. Meaning. Pile them bodies up. Pile them up. I want to see blood. I want to see bodies. Right? Hey, man, the Lord ain't nothing to be played with. You know what I'm saying? The, the fear of the Lord these days is taught by the precept of men. What is the fear of the Lord being taught by the precept of men? Is not fearing the Lord. That's what that is. Right? It says, go ye forth. And they went forth and slew the city. Right. This is a this is a uh, uh um a horrible like a like a like a like a horror scene, man. Ezekiel had literally witnessed Ezekiel literally witnessed a a a, a um a horror scene in front of his own eyes. Right. It says, and it came to pass while they were slaying them, I was left that I fell upon my face and cried and said, Ah, Lord God. Yahweh, it says, wilt thou destroy all the residue of Israel in that and not pouring out of thy fury upon Jerusalem? Man, Ezekiel had to had to ask him. He's like, man, you going to destroy? Are you going to destroy the residue? Like, man, you just you just it seemed like you just not leaving none left. Like I said, man, he 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 witnessed he witnessed a horror scene, man. He really did. Then said he unto me, the iniquity of the of the house of Israel and Judah is exceedingly is exceeding great. It says, and the land is full of blood, and the, and the city full of perverseness. For they say the Lord hath forsaken the earth, and the Lord seeth it seeth not. So, again, going to the Lord's judgment, right? There has there is no no impurities. Right, there is no impurities when it comes to the Lord's judgment. You have an impure child, well, that child is going to, have to be judged. Everybody likes to talk about they're innocent. No, nobody's innocent. The second you're born here, you're not innocent. This is why you gotta go on a reincarnation, right? If infants were so innocent, how come why is the Lord allowing them to go through what they're going through right now? Getting shot up and stuff like that. I'm talking about, I'm talking about like, like you know gels the, the with the doctors you know what i'm saying drugging them up the second the second that they come out right why is why is this happening because the lord's judgment does not have a, a, uh, limits on age or gender it doesn't matter who you are you can always receive the lord's judgment everybody has Anyway, giving all praise on the glory to Yahweh Bashmi Yahweh Shalom.